Installing Optional Window If you are installing an optional window kit, check your manual for the simple trim installation procedures. If you're not putting in a window, skip this step and move on to step 11. Installing Trim on Garage Door Frame Measure from the slab up to the bottom of the garage door header. Then, with your sheet metal shears, cut the angle trim, two pieces for each door, to this length. These will trim out the door jams. Then cut another piece of angle trim to fit the header of each door. On a 16-foot wide door, you will need to cut a 6-foot 3-inch piece and overlap it with a 10-foot piece to span the distance. The angle trim should be secured with the painted self-drilling screws with rubber washers spaced about 24 inches apart. Just like with the walk-in door, your kit may provide J-trim, not pictured here, to go over the door as a drip catcher. The installation is very similar. Check your manual for details. Use the pan head self-drilling screws to attach this trim also. Use only enough screws to keep the trim in place. Additional screws will be installed after side sheet metal is installed. Make sure all door and window trim is installed before moving on. Step 12. Installing Side Sheet Metal Panels Start at one corner of the building. If you start at the back of the building, the overlapping seams in the sheet metal will be less obvious. If you are in a high wind area, you may want to start on a corner of the building where the wind is at your back. It's important to get the first panel plumb and square, since all the following panels will depend on it for their positioning. Place the first panel on the slab or down into your sheeting ledge. Be sure to put the overlap edge, as shown here, at the starting corner of the building. Then the second panel will be able to overlap one rib of the first panel and so on down the building. To attach sheet metal panels to your building, you will be using the painted hex head self-drilling screws with rubber washers. The panels may tend to stretch or compress when you're installing them, so be sure that it's 36 inches from the center of the first rib of a panel to the first rib of the next panel. Now remember, your building will look best if the screws are lined up straight down the sides of the building. Use a straight edge or tie a piece of string tied to the first screw to use as a guide for lining them up. You should install a screw on both sides of each major rib at the top and bottom of each panel and one screw to one side of the major ribs at all other locations. Panels should be attached to all purlins or girts between the top and bottom of the panel. You will need to measure and cut out panels around the walk door and any windows that you may install. Measure and mark the panels for the door or window cutouts, leaving about an eighth inch clearance around the door or window. Panel edges should sit into the J-trim around the door or window. Make the horizontal cuts first, the ones across the ribs, with tin snips. Vertical cuts can be done with tin snips, but we recommend using a straight edge and a utility knife with a fresh, sharp blade. Using the straight edge to keep your cut straight, Score the sheet metal with the utility knife along the vertical cut line. Now, bend the part of the sheet metal that you wish to remove along and away from the score until it breaks off clean. You'll be amazed how much easier this method is than cutting the entire length with shears or snips. Step 13. Installing Gable End Sheet Metal Panels First, the back panels. You'll want to start in the middle of the building and work your way toward the sides. Check your manual for the panel sizes and panel layout for your building. To begin with, Flush up the underlap edge of the first panel with one edge of the back center post. Because 30-foot wide buildings do not have a center vertical post, you'll need to measure to find the center of the building and make a mark on the base rail and girts one inch to the side of the building center. Again, check the manual. While you're looking at the manual, notice how the sheet metal is pre-cut. You'll still have to make the diagonal cut, but the panels are sized to cover their general positions with minimal waste. 
After you measure the length to the high point, make a mark 9.5 inches down the other side of the panel. This will give you the proper roof slope, regardless of building size. Then cut the angle with a pair of large tin snips. Fasten the panels with the painted self-drilling screws with rubber washers. Do not put any screws next to the overlap rib until the next panel is in place. You'll need to lift the overlap edge of each panel to insert the underlap edge of the next panel as you go to one corner of the building. As you install panels in the opposite direction from center, the panels will overlap just as they did on the sides of the building. Now the front panels. Measure, mark, and cut the top angle on the front the same way you did in back. You can make the measurements with the panels in place against the building, or lay them down and go by the measurements you've taken. You will need to measure and make cutouts for the doors. Leave about an eighth inch gap between the edge of the sheet metal and the inside of the J-trim. The panels should fit into the J-trim on the sides and top of the doors. The cross cuts or horizontal cuts are done with the snips just as the angle cuts and the vertical cuts are done the same way as before with the utility knife. Step 14. Installing Corner Trim Installing the corner trim is pretty straightforward. Cut the trim piece to length with your snips. Then screw the trim to each of the four corners of the building with one inch painted self-drilling screws. The screw should be in the flange of the corner trim at the girts and base rail. Step 15. Installing Eave Trim First, check your manual for tips on installing the foam closure strips at the top of the side paddle since they are not shown here. You can line up your Eave Trim correctly and easily by taking a straight edge like this level and place it on a roof frame. Then take your Eave Trim and slide it up until it touches the bottom of the straight edge. Then screw it down with the self-drilling screws. The trim comes in 10-foot lengths, so you'll have to overlap trim pieces on longer runs. Overlap the pieces about 3 inches and start at the rear of the building and work toward the front so that the front trim will overlap the rear, making for a cleaner look when viewed from the front. The ends of the trim should be flush with the corners of the corner trim. Step 16. Installing Roof Sheet Metal Panels Now that we're getting close to completion, your building is really taking shape. You'll need at least two people to install the roof panels. One on a tall ladder in the center of the building, and one to walk panels up a ladder on the outside of the building and set them on the roof. A third person to hand panels up to a person already on an outside ladder is very helpful. The sheet metal is sized to allow a two-inch overhang at the eaves. To locate the panels on the roof, we recommend anchoring a guide string at the top of the roof panels. Attach a self-drilling screw to act as a tie-off for a guide string. Do not run the screw all the way in. Tie a nylon string tightly from one screw to another. Do this on the other side of the roof as well. There will be two screws at the front of the building and two at the back. Install the first roof panel at the same end of the building that you started the side panels. Place the overlap edge of the first panel along the edge of the roof frame. The installer at the peak of the building must line up the upper edge of the panels with the string and outer edge of the building frame. The person at the lower edge of the roof panel should help line up the panel with the outer edge of the building. Both installers should then screw down the panel with painted self-drilling rubber washer screws that match the color of the roof panels. Screw the panels to the roof purlins. Another thing to check as you install the roof panels is the distance from the leading edge of each panel to the next roof wall frame section. That distance at the top and bottom of the panel should be about the same. Continue overlapping and installing the rest of the roof panels on one side of the roof and then repeat the assembly on the other half of the roof. Remember that the distance from the center of the overlap rib to the center of the underlap rib should be maintained at 36 inches. Be sure to consult your manual if you have any questions about this procedure.